In the world of boxing, few fighters can match the raw talent and skill of Errol Spence Jr. Oh! Oh! Spence said that's what he wanted to do. He will drop Sean Spence Jr. has captured multiple world titles and earned the respect of boxing fans around the globe. Careful to Spence, but now Spence going to work and he drops Bundu. My goodness, Bundu is done and this one is over. Errol is a beast. Are you surprised? <laughs> now we look at when Errol Spence Jr. dominated his opponents. Bitch, watch your mouth. Watch. Bitch, stay in your place. Play. After rising through the ranks, Errol was given an opportunity of a lifetime when he faced Kel Brook in his first world title shot. This is my time and I believe, the team believe, that we're going to take that title away from him. We believe that he's not boxed anyone at my level. I'm absolutely 110% ready for this mentally and physically. You can see the shape of me. I'm, I can't wait for uh, this Saturday night. Brooks started strong, using his jab to keep Spence Jr. at bay and landing some solid punches in the early rounds. However, Spence Jr. remained patient and continued to apply pressure, eventually breaking down Brooks' defense and landing some hard shots. In the 10th round, Spence Jr. landed a series of devastating punches that forced Brooke to take a knee, and the fight was eventually stopped in the 11th round. Official scorecard, Steve Barrett has a dead even. Do you believe this is the start of a long reign at the top of the world's weight division? Definitely. The goal is to unify the titles. You know, I want to fight Keith Thurman next. You know, uh, Manny Pacquiao next. I want to fight the champions, unify the division, become the undisputed world's weight champion of the world. We came to get it in. We came to get it in. We ain't gonna turn it down. Determined to cement his status as the top dog in the competitive welterweight division, Errol Spence Jr. set his sights on a high-stakes showdown with Showtime Sean Porter, the reigning WBC World Welterweight Champion. Their unification bout was one of the most eagerly anticipated fights of the year and took place on September 28, 2019 at the iconic Staples Center in Los Angeles. Tonight on Saturday, September 28th here at Staples Center, Errol Spence Jr. taking on Showtime Sean Porter. I'm going to take care of him September 28th. Now I'm going to hopefully be going after Manny Pacquiao. Simple as that. Y'all already know what time it is. Man down. 
And we're going to do that September 28th. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you order it. I am going to knock you out, though. That's not how you're supposed to. I am going to knock you out, though. You sure? I promise you that. Come get it. I promise you. Come get it. You know I'm coming. Come get it. I'm coming. This, I'm better than you, talent wise, skill wise. And I know I got more doubt than you. You're going to find out. Bitch, I'm beating 25 and all quarter at 32 and 1. Away we go. This bout was a thrilling display of both fighters' courage and determination as they traded punches in close quarters throughout the match. And the very effect only with the punches. Oh, oh caught him to the left. It's Spence. Now Sean Porter is winging his punches. In the early rounds, Porter came out strong, unleashing a barrage of punches that at times overwhelmed Spence Jr. However, Spence Jr. quickly adjusted his strategy, targeting Porter's body and slowly gaining an edge. With his score still close in the 11th round, Spence Jr. seized the opportunity and landed a devastating left hook to Porter's chin, sending him to the canvas for the first and only knockdown of the fight. Although Porter quickly got up on his feet, the knockdown proved to be the deciding factor, and Spence Jr. emerged victorious in a hard-fought battle. Careful, Sean's got to be careful. Go run into another one like that, and he may not get up. Porter has landed. There was Spence wants to get his hands up. Porter tied him up for a second. Porter's fighting all the way to the wire. We'll show another big right fight. He is now the WBC and the IBF welterweight unified champion of the world. Errol Spence Jr. I'm announcing that this will be your next opponent. He's the top dog and I want the top spot. So I'm here to tell Errol Spence I want you next, baby. Let's get it on. Right look, right look, right look. Gotta step over there, right there, right there, right there. On December 5th, 2020, Errol Spence Jr. took on Danny Swift Garcia in a highly anticipated welterweight title fight. Spence had not fought in over a year due to a near fatal car accident. Street. In that car was Errol Spence Jr. He's the boxing champion from DeSoto. That's the first thing. How are you feeling? How is your health? How is your face? How's everything? Um, everything's been good. Um, like everybody knows, I've been in uh, a horrible car accident, but I'm feeling good. I spent a lot of time with my family, my friends, and my little girls, and just you know, enjoying the time with them while I've been off from boxing. Garcia gained notoriety in 2012 with his prior accomplishments aligned with those of his opponent on December 5th, having defeated esteemed fighters such as Eric Morales, Zab Judah, Bali Malignaggi, and Amir Khan. Oh my! That's it, just like that. Great exchange, and down goes Judah. Straight right hand through the guard. At the end of that exchange, another chopping right hand, and it is over. Down goes Patrick. There it is. He's got his left In this game, people go write what they want to write. They can say what they want to say, but at the end of the day, you have to fight. I'm here because I can fight. Errol Spence is not the truth. He's a lie. Welterweight Championship of the World. Denny Garcia says, I believe I can hurt him. The first round, vitally important to see the effects of that car crash on Errol Spence and the strategy of Denny Garcia. We're underway round number one. In the early rounds, Errol Spence Jr. used his superior footwork and hand speed to keep Danny Garcia at bay, peppering him with jabs and combinations. Garcia tried to counterpunch, but Spence's constant pressure made it difficult for him to get into a rhythm. Duh you know, put some real hurt on him. Beautiful as well. I mean, he's such a complete boxer. But there's a hard thing. I got Spence ahead. Exactly, and he looks like just a nice left hand right there. He looks on Garcia in the early rounds. And again, he has such a high boxing IQ. He worked with Spence. You see that? He's, he's doing what he normally does, which is 
Block and counter, slip and counter. He just landed a nice uppercut hook out of that corner before he... Spence is, is really, really... ...for his opponent as the rounds go on, and he just doesn't change a bit. It's a beautiful look right there at AT&T Stadium. You go back out there, you got six minutes left. They were blocked, and, and, you know, Errol Spence is doing the right thing, keeping his hands up. It's always even ahead of time. Oh, good right hook by Spence. Spence coming, well, and this is their thing. You don't know, you don't know. This was an impressive performance by Spence, who showed that he had fully recovered from the car accident that had put his career in jeopardy the previous year. Challenger and the tough former champion that Errol Spence is in deep back. He says, I am the best welterweight in the world, hands down, and he proved that here again tonight. Yeah, we came to get a game on. We the elite, my team stay strong. On April 26, 2022, Errol Spence put on an impressive performance on Showtime, challenging the brave 2008 Olympic bronze medalist Cuban boxer Yodanis Ugas. Ugas had just come off one of the biggest career wins to date when he defeated Manny Pacquiao in an all-out war. Good hard right hand by Ugas. Jordanis Ugas! So on Saturday night, when the fight takes place, how do you see the fight going down? Of course I'm going to win, but I'm going for the knockout, Dick. You're going for the knockout? Oh, Dick, yeah. Spence fighting his fourth consecutive championship level fighter in his sixth in his last seven fights. He doesn't want tune-ups. He wants to fight the best. And Ugas, he's facing his second consecutive southpaw opponent after upsetting Manny Pacquiao. He's six and one against lefties with three knockouts. The bell at round one of the 12th welterweight unification fight in history for Errol Spence. He's involved in his... Ugas' size and skill appeared to confound Spence early on. Gets to land an uppercut. Well, very interesting that you said it's third round. Bro, come back with anything, so Spence has to keep that volume. First time using a nutritional. Yes. Yep. Left uppercut, right left in the fifth. You know, Ugas is fighting. Uh, he is now at a, at a pivotal point. Round here. The Cuban Olympic bronze medalist hurt Spence with a right uppercut and a right hand that had Spence falling back into the ropes and sending his mouthpiece flying in the sixth. Spence of DeSoto, Texas, stormed back to beat Ugas repeatedly to the body and eye. By the tenth round, Ugas' right eye was completely shut. By clinching the victory, Spence claimed three championship belts and appeared to be in his best form yet. How much more the corner the referee is going to allow for your Denny Zugas to absorb? Errol Spence Jr. just not only closed the eye, he indeed is one of the boxers on planet earth everybody know who i want next i want terry Crawford next like i said i'm gonna get these straps and i'm gonna go over there and take his shit too get man down strap season i know what time it is baby terry's i'm coming for that motherfucking belt